started out uh, after school in the Navy because they, uh, they paid my way through Northwestern. So as a very poor student, I was able to go to a, a nice private university and get a degree in electrical engineering. There I went to Litton Industries and I was working on uh, the A6A, which was called the computer plane. This idea for starting a school happened rather randomly. Hank and I were newly married. Hank saw an ad in one of the newspapers in, from New York City. Saw an ad uh, for uh, a computer school director. And I thought, oh, that really appealed to me because I'm not only working with uh, this computer, but I'm training the Navy in how to use it. We followed up. It was franchises to start schools in computer programming. We stood on a street corner, actually, on November 4th. I remember the date exactly, in 1964, before we went in for a second interview. And we just stood there and said, well, let's, let's really think about, you know, do we want to do this or do we not want to do this? You know, we, we looked at it, we thought, let's go for it. Very early, our institution was founded as, as one location of a bigger system called ECPI. Electronic Computer Programming Institute. They offered quite a few franchises and they, they sold them. You know, at that time they were quite successful. When we first realized it was a franchise, we thought, well, uh, let's, let's see if we can buy Long Island because that's where we are. And uh, Long Island had been sold and so we had to work our way west. I was generally familiar with Milwaukee. Uh, because I grew up in Libertyville, Illinois. It wasn't that far. It's, you know, within an hour of Milwaukee. We traveled out to Milwaukee in 1965, January of 65, in the middle of a snowstorm. And I ended up with a strep throat. And Suzanne was a few months pregnant, was walking around trying to find me a doctor. Uh, so it wasn't a very auspicious beginning, you know. When Suzanne and I started the school, uh, I worked on uh, the student recruiting and uh, hiring instructors, and she worked on a lot of the administrative functions, you know, running the front office, uh, the accounting, and, and that, uh, and the bookkeeping. I think I was the second employee. <laughs> we didn't have a lot of people, and I did whatever was necessary. It wasn't easy to start out, but we just kept at it. We rented some space on Wisconsin Avenue, uh, recruited our first class of 12 students in April of 1965, and uh, gradually grew from there. You know, in 65 we're struggling, 66 struggling not quite as hard, 67 is a little bit better. By the beginning of 1968, they were calling me about schools that were failing, <laughs> and uh, we were doing quite well at that point, so uh, that's where we ended up taking over Toronto and then Montreal and then Birmingham. And then uh, in 1969, they weren't keeping up with the curriculum. Uh, so we had an instructor who was writing material on that. And uh, somebody came out to Milwaukee from the home office and he said, you can't do that. And I said, what do you mean I can't do that? There's nothing in my franchise agreement that prohibits it, which was true. That's why we ended up separating. Other names were thrown around, other ideas, and someone said, well, why not Hersing? What's wrong with Hersing? So we went with it. Renee was born about that time, too. So it is a challenge balancing that with their home life and, and with, with kids. And to, uh, to make it even more complicated, I guess I can identify with the students because both my wife and I uh, went to, uh, to school. She went to library school to get a master's degree and I went on for an MBA, doing homework in a hotel room and uh, whatever, or after the kids went to bed, as well as you know, having a full-time job uh, operating the, uh, the schools at that time. Probably, you know, the most vivid personal memory is more that my father was traveling a lot, so I do remember being very happy when he was back. In fact, I would always run and um, sit on his foot and put my arms around his leg, but I did work a little bit. We'd help put mail packets together, my sister and I, uh, to go out to prospective students. Looking back on the 50 years, it's been this evolution from literally a startup with a few students and one classroom to adding more discipline areas, you know, going from what was technology to adding business and healthcare and 
public safety and design, so adding more of these disciplines. Not every job can you really tangibly hear stories where people say, this was the best decision I made in my life. This has completely changed my life. And I've had those conversations after every graduation. Fifty years is the number that I have a hard time believing. It's amazing how quickly time has passed. They've been good years. It's been a great story and a great journey of how something that two people started with a group of students can turn into something that will have everlasting impact. You know, I really love what we do and I love the role that we play because I can go to graduations, you know, and I can see how we've changed people's lives. And you often hear of people coming up and maybe saying, well, thanks for the great education. But when they come up and say, thanks for starting the school, it's pretty special.